Hello everybody. This video accompanies the notebook on time series data of the series Exploratory Computing with Python. My name is Mark Bucker and I work at the Delft University of Technology. Today we will get introduced to the Pandas package. The Pandas package is, for Python is a Python data analysis library. Here you see the website where there is lots of information about all the things you can do with Pandas. We will only scratch the surface and use a few basic features of pandas. The first thing we'll do is to use pandas to read in our data file and then to analyze it. We'll start with the regular import statements, import numpy snp, import matplotlib.py plot splt, we tell the IPython notebook that all figures should be in line and then we're going to import from the pandas package from pandas import the read csv function and the read csv function allows you to read in data files of the csv format and csv stands for comma separated values we have a data file that we're going to work with today that lists the oil prices um, per month starting in 1985 month 5 so that's may in which time the at which time the oil price was 36 dollars for a barrel you see it even goes lower than that and in august of 2013 the price has gone up to 83 dollars we're going to read in this data file uh, with the read csv function a couple things to notice the first two lines here are explanations and most data files do have some explanations we don't want to read in those lines, so we have to tell the function not to read those. And then we start reading from there on two columns of data, one with the uh, year and month, and the other one with the oil price. Um, we're going to use, like I said, the read CSV function, and we're going to store that in a variable called oil. Oil is read CSV. And then there's a lot of options, as you can see here. Lots of options, but we'll use a few. First of all, we have to tell which file to use. And the file name is oilpricemonthly.dat. Then we have to tell the read CSV file that we don't want to read in the first two lines because that's just information. So we type skip. And if you now hit the tab, you see which kind of keyword arguments there are that start with skip. And we're going to use the skip rows equals two. We're going to skip the first two rows. Um, and then we do one more thing. Um, we're going to tell it to skip initial spaces. So I hit skip again, type skip again, hit the tab, and I go to skip initial space equals true. And I'll tell you what that means later on. Now we have our oil data, and we can type print oil. Here's our oil, oil data, and you'll see there's lots of them. In fact, there's dot, 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 and it continues. Um, the number here is the number of the row we read in, and there's 340 rows and two columns. The two columns, the first column is the year month, and the second column is price. So notice that when we read this in, it right away took the names that were in this data file and assigned the year month to the first column and the price to the second column. The reason I specified skip initial space equals true is that when you look at this file here that this price name here has a couple spaces and then the word price um, if i would have not told the read csv file to skip the initial spaces then it would have made the name of the column space 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 price we don't want that we want the name to be just price and we can do that by specifying skip initial space equals true oil looks like an array but it's not an array it's called a data frame so if we ask for the type of the oil variable it tells us it's a pandas data frame um, and i just printed it to the screen when you have a very long data frame printing it to the screen doesn't make much sense if you type oil.head and it's a function that's working on the oil data frame if i, I hit shift enter and i want to do print because i like that better um, it prints the first five lines to the screen. Um, 
like I said, it's not an array, it's a data frame, but you can access it very similarly to an array. It has, zero, it has rows numbered 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, I think all the way up to 340. And it has column 0 and column 1, which also have names. To access it just like an array, uh, we have to specify the index, the row number, and the column number, so we can do oil, but we cannot do parentheses open now. We have to do iLock for dot iLock for the i location. And then we do square brackets, number zero, row zero, column zero, gives us 1980, 1985.05. Um, row one gives us 9805 oh, uh, Row one, column one, should give us, give us this price, $35.41. Uh, that is if you want to assign or you want to access values in the data frame by row and column number. You can also access them by uh, columns by name, which is nice. We can type oil dot price. That gives us the entire column named price. There it is. They're all there. But we can also just say the first five, number zero through five, just like in a race that gives us the first five values of the price column. Um, we can do the same thing for the year month. The first five are these. Or the last five, right? Which goes from minus five to the end. Gives us the last five uh, year month values in this data frame. Pandas has lots of nice functions that can work on data frames. For example, we can calculate for the price column, we can calculate the minimum value. That's the lowest price that the oil ever had, which is only $8.75. We can calculate the max value, uh, $94. We can calculate the mean value of the entire array, which was $32. Or we can plot the oil price, plot. And it gives this nice graph. Uh, from 0 through 340, which is the number of uh, data values in the array or in the data frame, and it plots, plots it. <clears throat> uh, after this, you can still add labels using the same syntax you're used to, plt.ylabel is oil price in dollars. And you see there's the oil price. This is all very nice and very useful. But what I really would want to do is I want to have this oil data in a data frame where the rows are not numbered 0 through 340, but they, they are numbered by the year month we have. And we can do that as well. Um, we, have to, we do that by specifying it when we read in our oil data. So I'm going to copy this line. We're going to read it back in. And now we're going to tell it the... Um, index call is equal to column zero, which means it will take its index from column zero. Then if we now say oil.head, so it gives us the first five lines, and we do print, I, like it. I just like it better when you print it with print. You see that now it is a data frame um, with only one column, which is price, and the index is now not 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but it has the year month index. And we can access values now by specifying the year month and the price. So we can say the oil, um, and then we, had, we used the notation lock, to, so not anymore I lock. I lock was the index location. We now give it the location. We tell it 1985-05, comma. Uh, price, in this case there is only one column, but that will give us this value here, $36.63. If you want it for uh, September 1985, we change this to 9, it will give us the row 1985-09 and the column price. I am still not totally satisfied yet because now the index here is a string, 1985-05, for example. Uh, I don't want it to be a string, I really want it to be a date. And, I can, and pandas can do that as well. 
So we're gonna read the oil back in again with one more option and it's called parse dates parse dates is equal to and then you have to tell it which column contains the dates that you want to parse and it was column zero now if i type oil.head the first i keep forgetting to write print print this is now the um it's now a date 1985-05 you see it automatically substituted the very first day of the month in there um, and that is now truly a date that we can use we can plot for example the oil price and it will automatically generate the um, the dates along the horizontal axis so we do oil dot price dot plot open and close parentheses hit shift enter and see there's our graph and along the bottom it has not bottom the horizontal axis it has nicely put for us there the uh, years in this case because all the months would be too much uh, where the measure measurements were taken so now we right away know that we have dates now that the index truly is a date we can use that we can ask for uh, the oil prices of 1990 oh it has to be between quotes sorry so for the entire year and I want to print them to the screen it gives us all the months of 1990 that's what's in the data file um, I can even ask for 1990 to give us the mean value it is the mean value of the year 1990 um, we can say from 1990 to 1995 it calculates the mean value in a period from 1990 to 95 or we can ask for the maximum value of that period it gives us $25.98 the final thing I want to show you is how to resample right now we have monthly oil data what if we want to have yearly oil data that means that we're going to downsample our data from monthly to yearly and for that there is a function called resample and we say year oil for example it's called oil.resample we're going to resample that's a function and again a pandas function that can work on data frames we open the parentheses it's going to give us some help first we have to tell it a rule we want to resample it annually um, and annually is uh, given a capital A you can also do monthly would be capital M weekly capital W and so forth um, we want to resample it and they have to tell it how how is equal to well what do we want we have we want uh, the yearly mean for example so we take the yearly mean and then we want to assign it to what do we want to assign it to the last day or the last month of the year or the first month of the year I kind of want to assign to the year um, and that is called kind is equal to period we hit enter shift enter it has now resampled that we can just print that entire data frame this new year oil data frame to the screen and you see that for the years they're still called year month that's maybe a bit odd for every year we have now the mean oil price calculated for that year or if we do here max we get the maximum oil price for every year and we can plot that too we can do year oil year oil dot plot shift enter here's our yearly maximum oil price um, and if you don't like a line but we want to have a bar then we say here kind is equal to bar and there's our oil price nicely labored by year with the maximum uh, monthly oil price for each year and along the vertical axis we might we want to say that right plt.y label max oil max monthly monthly oil price of each year right in dollars there we go that's all I have for you today hope to see you next time